I'm Paul. <laughs> uh, we're originally from a little town called Crum, Texas. My name is Sue. Paul and I have been married for 16 glorious years. Uh, we chose to move to Mexico because we uh, retired on March 15th of 2020 and we had all, had all plans to move to Panama. I had lived there when I was in the service. Uh, we went back a couple times and toured around and uh, <clears throat> we had everything done, was ready to go. Five days after we retired is when COVID lockdown hit, five whole days. And uh, so we had to cancel our airline tickets. We sat around the house in Texas for a couple months, got tired of that. I was on a Zoom call and talked to somebody that talked about Huatuco, Mexico. Well, the next week, we caught a plane, went to Huatuco, Mexico, fell in love with it, and uh, went back to the States for four days, sold everything we owned, and went back to Huatuco. Been in Mexico ever since. Did the research to move to Mexico, and, and, uh, and we love it here. We, we, we think it was a smart decision for us. So. We like Mexico better because the food is better, the people are happier, and one big advantage is being that much closer to the U.S. Um, if we, I mean, we saw a family in the U.S., so if we need to get back there for whatever reason, it's very easy. Here, it's a two-hour flight. So uh, when we first chose to move to Mexico and we had learned about Huatuco, we moved there, met a lot of people, uh, had, we loved the town, but it's a very small town. Um, they didn't have some of the amenities that they have uh, here where we are now. So about six months or so ago, we packed up, drove up to here. It's a two and a half day drive from Huatuco to Puerto Vallarta area. And we moved to this little town called uh, La Cruz, Guanacaste. We have a lot of the advantages of the same as Huatuco, a small town, a close knit community, but we have Puerto Vallarta within 30 minutes with all the conveniences there, Costco, you know, Sam's Club, uh, Home Depot, great grocery stores, well, even here, great grocery stores, great hospitals, a lot of conveniences that we didn't have there. We didn't consider everything uh, that we sh probably should have when we first moved to Huatuco, even though I would never knock that area. Like I say, it's great, but we didn't uh, consider the advantages of having more medical available here, bigger grocery stores, a lot of the things that we used to buy in the United States, you couldn't buy in Huatuco, but you can buy here in this area we live at now. So those are some of the things that we didn't take in consideration, but it, they weren't bad things. They were just uh, things that after a year and a half, we thought we would just change up a little bit. We researched several places, but this, this area, especially the north of Puerto Vallarta, kept coming up at the top of the list of all the conveniences you need. It's still beach towns. Um, it is a little more crowded here for sure, but out here we feel like we're kind of isolated from, from all the traffic of Puerto Vallarta, even Nuevo. Okay, so, um, and the other thing we liked about this area over Huatulco Watulco had one golf course for m hundreds of miles. Here we have like five within 30 minutes. So, and some really nice ones. So, and we play golf, so <laughs> we love it here. We love the choices. La Cruz is about 30 to 45 minutes away. We're north of the Puerto Vallarta airport. So that makes them getting out of here or coming back easy. I mean, we're not, in the area where it's very heavily populated and noisy around the airport. We're out in a, a more of a rural rural area and um, it's, it's only a 30 to 45 minute drive. We like this area because, uh, like we said before, it's small, it's, it is a community, it's not touristy. I mean, there's a lot of, some, a lot of tourism goes in and out of the marina. You've, there's restaurants and little tiendas and, um, that kind of thing, but it's not a tourist town at all that we really like about it. And we can walk a block and a half down the street and there's three or four restaurants right there. There's a, the town square is right, right beside us. So, you know, when there's something going on here and they, they do a lot of festivals and, you know, 
fun things in the square so we can walk down and, and walk. We can walk to so many things here. We can walk to the marina. We can walk, there's beaches on either side of the marina. So there's a lot of things to do. One of the things we also did when we first moved here by walking every place, we would meet people sitting out in front of their houses. And uh, it, it shocked me one day, I was watching two little boys playing marbles. When we all were young, we all played marbles. Well, one boy had a marble, the other one had a rock. So it, it kind of hit me. And so I went down and bought them toys and marbles and coloring books and, and just gave them out to the local people. And so now when we walk down the road, uh, you know, everybody hollers at us uh, here in Mexico. I'm known as Pablo and so, and Susana. And so we're walking down the road and everybody in their, everybody in their houses step outside and, hey, Pablo, hey, Susana. And it's, it's just a close knit town. We have felt very welcome in this town. When we first moved here, we actually lived in Nuevo Vallarta which is actually Nuevo Nayarit now. But uh, we lived in a townhouse over there uh, that we found on Marketplace. And um, we liked it, it was nice. It was uh, across the street from the beach, but everybody around us were on, was on vacation. And so we felt like we weren't getting to know anybody because everybody's on vacation. And it also didn't have a, a proper yard for the dogs, so we started just watching for rentals and this one showed up actually just on Facebook one day, not even Marketplace, just on Facebook. So we came out to look at it and it has a yard for the dogs. It's got plenty of room, more room than we need and a nice view. So it was in the same price. So it was a no brainer. This, this is, and it's, it's quieter out here. Um, and like I said, we feel part of the community. Nuevo's being on vacation. It's not where you live. Yeah, with the rental, we've been very happy. We have a fantastic landlord. We need something. He's right there to help us um, in one way or another, rather it's getting us to the right people or him just coming out here and, and helping us take care of something. If we can look out our back window, we're looking right into the marina. Uh, so we get to see the boats coming in and out every day and the evening when they come back and all the people have been out partying on boats all day, so you can hear everybody's all excited. And <laughs> so it's, 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 it's fun living here. Yes, and in the, in the uh, busy season, uh, out at the marina, they have a market. It's on Sundays, but this market has always been the biggest that I've seen. And they have some of the funnest um, artwork, and the people will stop and talk to you and explain their artwork to you. It is, and, and then they have food at the very end and so you, you get to a, a taste of, of all the culture. Um, yeah, the, the, little, the market here out at the marina has been really fun. But it's not going on right now, but it, it'll be back in another couple of months. So uh, one of the things at the market is over our shoulder you can see the picture uh, on the wall and that is a, uh, what's the? Huicho art. Huicho art, and, and the guy that did it, we met the actual artist that, that made it, and he explained the story of it. It's kind of a, a, like a clock, and it goes around clockwise and tells a story. And if we can't remember the story, it's real simple because he took the, the picture, and if I turn it over, he wrote in English the whole story of that picture on the back of it. So it's not just some artwork, it's actually a story of the area. And it's a piece of, it's a piece of wood with beeswax on it, and then little strips of yarn that make the whole picture. It's very intricate. Yeah. Renting is difficult. It was difficult in Huatulco, and it's difficult here because um, these places cater to vacationers and so they jack the prices up for high season and some of them will sit empty just to be rented in high season. So it's very difficult to find a, a landlord who is willing to rent full time at a, re at a re reasonable price. We had the same problem in Huatulco is very small so it's kind of a bigger problem there. But here we, were, we found the same thing, that it's very difficult to find long-term, reasonable rental, especially with any kind of view. If you have a view of the ocean, a full view of the ocean, it's ridiculous, the prices. But people are paying it 
so they get away with it, you know. So, um, and I understand that's a problem with locals because they totally remove the locals from the market with some of the prices in, in, in the areas. And even they are forced to move back away, way away from the water just to get something they can afford. So it, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to find. Uh, you just have to keep looking. And if you're looking, if you're looking for long term, do not come in high season. Come in low season. Come in the middle of summer or late summer. Um, you know, we've started to see a lot more things pop up lately for rent, but it's it's not easy. It's not a quick process. There's no MLS. There's no um, apartments.com to find something. You have to really look, you have to talk to people. And the best way is getting to know people and network with a bunch of different people and you can find something. It just, it's not quick to find something. Also, it's not, it's very difficult to rent a house. We consider ourselves very lucky to have a, a full house. Um, a lot of condos, uh, duplexes, that kind of stuff here. Uh, I mean, it's just it's very difficult to find a house. And please, please, please don't rent something without seeing it. Don't take pictures and think that's the furniture that's going to be in the house when you travel here and get into it, because it's probably not going to be there. Um, so what you do is you you get on Facebook and you find people that live here locally and, and somebody that will go out and just look at the house for you and walk through it and take pictures for you instead of what's posted on Facebook. Uh, it's a world of difference. It is a world of difference. And you'd be surprised there are a lot of people here that live here year round that are more than happy to help people and, and find them a nice place to, to stay. We actually did it for someone else. Yeah, we've, we've, we have helped people find houses. We've never charged anybody anything. That's not our thing. It's just, we like helping people. That's, that's one of the things, and, and one of the things we like to do. Uh, not just, we like helping the, uh, the local people. We like helping the people that are traveling here. Um, people laugh at us because uh, we met a couple the other day and the lady was telling us that they just moved here and they live here permanent, but they don't know anybody. And she says, she says uh, she can't just walk up and talk to people. And I said, it's nothing for us to be sitting in a, in a restaurant and you hear people speak in English and we just walk over and ask them where they're from. And several of our friends today are people we just walked up to or they walked up to us in a restaurant and just started a conversation. So. It's not hard to meet people and meet people that are willing to help you do something when you're not here but you're, you know you're coming and you need a little bit of help. I like the, um, the community here. It, it's small. It's, um, we've got to know, you know our neighbors. We, know, we walk down the street to Bayana Blanca and we talk to people, the same people every day. You know. we've, get, we've gotten to know people in our town so we feel comfortable here. I guess the only thing I don't like about this town are that so many of the streets are dirt and ours is and it, right now it's in terrible shape because of the rain and there's not a lot of city services for that sort of thing. That's, but that's everywhere. That's not just here. So um, that's, the, that's the only thing I can think of that I don't like. There are some things that are a little bit of an irritation but it's what makes this place so cool. Back in April, they had a, um, a festival here, like um, celebrating the history of the town. Patronalis, I think was what it was called. For nine days, they blew off these little bombs at five o'clock in the morning. And it's, it was a throwback to when they had to call people to worship. The people in the mountains couldn't hear the, the bells, the church bells. And so they set off these little like M80 bombs so that people could know when it's time to come to church. So for nine days to commemorate that, they set off bombs from five to six in the morning. I'm, I mean like 15 or 16 of them. So you just go back to sleep and then, you know, there's another one. And then at night from seven to eight, they set off little bombs. But, it, but that's what makes this town so special. Things like that, that, that are so, it's different from any place we've ever been. And for nine days, they, down in the, in the plaza was 
totally shut down for a for party. I mean, they yeah. partied for nine days. And during that nine days, there'll, there'll be different activities going on in the square. The thing that sticks in my mind the most is the very last day. Uh, there's probably between 100 and 200 dancing horses they bring into town. Now that, to me, that's exciting. I, I could sit and watch the dancing horses all day long. So the way we get around is uh, here in town, we're gonna go eat or uh, just go down to the square. We walk, uh, every, there's a lot of things that are close by. Other than that, we have vehicles, we drive. Uh, the driving experience here in Mexico is uh, a little bit challenging. You just have to learn to follow their rules and their habits. Or lack of. <laughs> yeah, or lack of rules. <laughs> uh, but yes, it's, it's uh, I, when, when I go back to the States and we're talking to people and they ask me about the driving, I tell them, I says, you know, in the States, when I drive in the States, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. But in Mexico, you have to really pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, Sue will be saying, oh, there's uh, such and such a store over here to the right. I can't look at it. No, I got to watch that traffic because it's, 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 uh, it can be very uh, challenging, but it's all good. Here in La Cruz, we, we have a big marina out here, so there's all kinds of water sports. So if you like to fish or snorkel or uh, there's islands off the point, they can take you out to the islands. And it, so there's a lot of things to do right here. I mean, just walk out there. There's surfing up the coast. If you, if you like surfing, it's within 30 minutes. There's some pretty good surfing. So there's a lot of things to do. We feel absolutely safe living here in Mexico. For two years, we have not had one incident where we felt unsafe. We, I mean, we even drove from Huatulco to here, which is two and a half days. And I was nervous, but absolutely nothing happened. It was, it was safe, it was easy, there's bathrooms, there's, you know, gas stations everywhere. It's not the Wild West, you know, at all. So, yeah. and the only thing we've heard of around here, any kind of crime around here was somebody got their license plate stolen off their car, but that could happen anywhere, you know. Being safe is one of the major conversations that we have with friends and family back in the States, you know, do you feel safe? And, and I've had people ask me straight out, you know, aren't you afraid of this or afraid of that? And I say, you know, you just, you have to be smart. Uh, you don't go walking out in certain parts of town after dark. Uh, and, I, and somebody, I was having a conversation with somebody not too long ago and, and, I, and they asked me about that. And I said, yeah, I says, there's, there's a part of town that I, I wouldn't feel safe walking after dark. I said, but you know what? There's some places in Dallas, Texas, I wouldn't walk when the sun's still shining. So what's the difference? I says, you just have to use your head and don't put yourself in bad situations. Uh, so we, we've actually had no problems or scares of any kind here. We still have our, our uh, Medicare for in the States. Uh, if something major happens, we get on a plane and go back and get it taken care of. Uh, here, uh, I'm not afraid to tell people that uh, when we still lived in Watuco, I had a really bad problem, didn't know what was wrong with me, went to the hospital, uh, found out it was kidney stone. Um, they, I was in the hospital for half a day, IVs, x-rays, uh, blood work, you name it, they did everything. When I left the hospital, I paid them $80 cash money and that was my entire bill. I was done. And we, we purchased a policy called SkyMed that will medevac you out of here if you're not comfortable with whatever is going on medically, that it will pay your way. And it was pretty reasonable. So we have that to fall back on if, if it's something major medical. But I've heard of people here, even in Bucerias, having knee replacements and you know all kinds of surgeries. And apparently it's a great hospital. We just, here in, in Puerto Vallarta area, we haven't had to go to the hospital, so we haven't had a medical problem, so. We found out about the Mexico relocation guide through the Panama relocation tour. She, the, the lady who uh, started the Panama relocation tour has a daughter-in-law who is a Mexican, and she decided to do the same thing for Mexico. You can't do it quite the same because Mexico is a much bigger country. But she's done a fantastic job of 
pulling a lot of information from major areas where, um, where there are expats. And she's got some great information in, in her guide. And she's doing also regional tours now. And so before we moved from Watulco, we were, we were gonna do some tours for her there, but we wound up moving. But um, she's got some great information. In fact, um, when we came up here, I used uh, her person from Puerto Vallarta for some real estate recommendations. And uh, then when we, um, I recently lost my green card, my resident card. So I looked in her guide to see who she said to go to. And, and we had met a person, but it turned out it was the same person. She, she kind of confirmed that that was who to use. So we, we've used her guide for several things. It's, it's been very helpful. Mariana is very good to answer you. If you, have a, a, if you have a question, you've read things in there, you have you know, questions about some things, she will, she will respond very quickly and deal with you one-on-one. -on -one. It's not just that she throws a book at you and, and that's it. She's personally very helpful. She, we've, we talk to her a lot. <laughs> And we've asked her, you know, before we chose Puerto Vallarta, we went through the guide and looked at, you know, different areas and which ones were safe and which ones were, you know, what, what it was like to live there. And so, and if, she, and if she doesn't have the answer, she usually knows somebody that does have the answer. So she gives you the information of who, who to contact yeah. for that area of the question you've got. So she, she's a very helpful person. It's, it's an online guide. Um, so we... We have it whenever we have a question. I can't say that I've read the whole thing. It's a lot. I mean, it's a ton of information. But it's easy to search and it's easy to find what you need to know. And one thing I, that we like about the guide is, you know, we have talked about, you know, take a little vacation, take a week and go here or go there. And a lot of the places we would be going to, there are people there that you can contact and they'll help you find a hotel or a day pass someplace or whatever. You know, it's, it's, so that's the nice thing about the book and it being online because she keeps it updated. Even if you're not just moving here, you live here like we do, you can still refer to the book to go travel someplace and go visit another area. Well, some days um, we play in a golf league and so we play every Wednesday. Um, sometimes we play also on Sunday, we, you know, the golf course is here empty on Sunday, which is the opposite of the U.S. So Sunday's a good time to play golf. So we usually pay once or twice a week. Any day that I'm not doing anything, I go to water, there's a water aerobics class up the street. So I go to that if I'm not doing anything else. Um, Paul's working as a, a marshal at one of the golf courses now. So usually once a week he works. The other thing we do is we like to go to the go to a beach somewhere. Um, we do have a, a real nice uh, beach club right down the road from us here that uh, uh, our landlord happens to be a member of, so we get to go there for free. Uh, and it's, it's a very nice beach with swimming pools, uh, beachfront, food, drinks, all that. Um, sometimes you don't want to keep going to the same place all the time, so we'll just go down the road in, a mile and pull into a parking lot, walk out on the beach. You might pay 100, 100 or 200 pesos to rent a table and, and a, an umbrella and chairs and sit there and, and, and people watch on the beach. It, it's, I have more fun watching the people and watching, uh, first of all, the, how much time the parents spend with their children and how much time the uh, people spend with their parents and grandparents and helping them move, take them out into the water and, and taking care of them personally and making sure they're still enjoying life. Uh, so we really enjoy just sitting on the beach, having a drink and watching the people. We do that actually quite often. And every couple of weeks we drive up to Sayulita and, and watch the surfers. We like to watch the surfers. There's a a market up there so we walk around and cool little town um, once every two weeks or so we go into Puerto Vallarta and go to Costco and have a hot dog <laughs> and, and, do ice a little, cream. and ice cream <laughs> do a little shopping but um, I don't know we stay busy we we tend to stay busy and sometimes we don't sometimes we sit in our recliners and look out the window you know <laughs> like old people
Some of the challenges that we, we see is painters or whatever, and they say they're gonna be here at nine o'clock. They might be here at two, and, and, and sometimes it, it's, it's nine o'clock, but they might say nine o'clock on Monday, and they show up at nine o'clock on Tuesday. It can be a challenge, but that's the way of life here in Mexico, and so you, you, you kind of get used to it. Also, like if you need plumbing parts, uh, I have learned if I need a plumbing part, whatever it is I need, I'd completely take it apart and take the old part with me because they have so many different kinds and models and makes and, and so on and so forth. It, it's a, uh, the first time I did it, I went to the, I went to the plumbing store four times to, to get one little piece. And every time I brought it home, it was, it was wrong. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, it's a little aggravating, but it's something you get used to and you, you, learn, you learn their ways. After being in, you know, having a job and working and everything's, you know, time, 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 and then you move here and you go out to eat, and it might be 10 minutes before a waiter comes around, and it might be another 20 minutes before you get a drink, and it might be another hour before you get food. And that was kind of hard to get used to at first. But now it's like, it's expected. If somebody brings the food quickly, you're like, whoa, I didn't, you know, that's too soon. You know, I'm not done just sitting here. <laughs> so you learned that dinner is gonna take a couple hours. And that's okay. And that's fine. That's okay, you know. One thing I've learned to actually respect a lot here is when I'm done eating, I don't get a bill until, I'm, until I ask for a bill. Uh, and I got, I got so used to that our first year here that you know we, we went back at, a, at last Christmas and visiting with my brother and we went to a, a, a restaurant and I'm trying to get the girl's attention so I can order another beer. She brings a bill and sets it on the table. And I think, well, I guess they don't want me my money because they they want me to pay for what I've already had. So you don't have that problem here. You can sit there without anything to drink for a half an hour and then just call a waiter over and say, hey, I need another beer. And that's expected here. They, they will not bring you that. When, once you sit at the table, it's your table until you're done with it. I, I learned to really respect that here in Mexico. Because they respect family time. And if you're having dinner with your family, then they respect that to leave you alone, let you have your dinner and stay as long as you like. I love that. Yeah. Our life has changed so drastically moving here. It, it's it's kind of hard to believe that this one actually adjusted because he is a type A, worked, you know, 12 hours at least a day and constantly on the phone. We couldn't go on vacation. We couldn't get away from it. So when you totally cut that off, I thought he would really have a hard time adjusting to that but he just slid right into it. It was like, it was so drastic and so different, but I think we handled it pretty well, you know? Sometimes we get a little tired of each other because we're together all the time, but um, beyond that, I mean, it's just, it's good. It's all good. But I have seen cases of couples that can't handle all the togetherness. <laughs> no blood pressure pills anymore, you know? We both lost weight. You know, it's just been easy. Uh, we also have a lot of people ask us, well, what about the language barrier? Because I don't speak Spanish. I, I, I can speak enough Spanish to order my food, order drinks. Um, you know, the, the minor stuff I have no problem with. But to carry on a conversation, it, it, it just doesn't happen. Sue's done very well. She studies her Spanish and she does a whole lot better than me. But here in, Mex in, this, in areas that we've been in, uh, generally there's the people speak enough English that we don't have a communication problem. And if you do, I pick up my phone and use Google Translate and I speak into it, it repeats it in Spanish, and they listen to it, and then they answer my question and it repeats it back to me in English. It, we don't really have a communication problem. It's, we've never one time had a problem with that. Yeah, when we, when we first moved to Mexico, it took a while for me to remember that I wasn't on vacation. This was my home now. And so once I processed 
process that through my head that this is my life now. Uh, it's been good. It, it, it just, because you feel like some, some mornings to, to this day, uh, I wake up and think, hmm, I still feel like sometimes I'm on vacation, but I'm not, I, I live here, so. If you're considering moving, narrow down what you want. Do you want to be on the beach? Do you want to, do you want to be hot? Do you want to be cool? What kind of temperatures do you want? Um, what do you want to do? Because there are people I've heard that move here and realize they have no interests, they have no hobbies, and they, they're bored out of their minds. So think about what you want to do all day once you do retire. But definitely put boots on the ground. You have to go where you, if you're thinking of, a, of this area, then come here and get an Airbnb and stay for a month. And live like a, a resident, not a tourist. And just see if it's something you can handle. There's people that can't handle everything being not easy. In the US, you know what to expect when you go to a restaurant. You know what to expect when you go to a car dealer. You know what to expect when you need a driver's license. Here, it's so different. If you're using a walker or using a wheelchair, don't expect a nice smooth sidewalk to go down. Just, I've, I've never seen a level sidewalk anywhere that I've been to in Mexico. Uh, and it's just part of the, the culture here. It's just, you know, they build part of a sidewalk and then they'll two months later build another part of the sidewalk. And it's, they're, they're, it's, it's rough walking, it's rough, you, you could not take a wheelchair down a sidewalk here, any place. Uh, and and that's what she, a little bit of what she said about the temperature. Uh, as we said, we, when we first moved to Mexico, we moved to Huatuco. And, and again, I can't say enough nice stuff about Huatuco, a beautiful town. But it is a lot hotter in Huatuco than it is in the Puerto Vallarta vicinity. Uh, uh, what I have seen is usually about uh, 15 degrees Fahrenheit warmer in the Huatuco area than it is in the Puerto Vallarta, uh, La Cruz area. Uh, in fact, when we first came here, we literally had to go away and buy some jackets because we were walking the dogs in the morning and it was cold. We had to have a jacket. When we lived in Huatuco, we never, never had to have a jacket. Well, another thing that I've seen is don't expect social services to exist and if they you know if there are governmental things that you think need to be done you can't demand it i mean i i see on facebook you know some people get on there and well my the street light in front of my house doesn't work who do i have to call well you don't have to call anybody i mean don't expect it. I mean, I was talking to a lady that cuts my hair and she said, if, the, if there's a spot on the street that needs to be fixed, generally the people in the businesses get together and go fix it. You know, don't expect the government to be there. I can't think of anything that I would change about how we've, how we've come here and the things that we've done. Um, going to Watulco was a huge risk because we knew absolutely nothing about it. I mean, we watched videos on, and YouTube videos, but we didn't, we didn't know anybody who had ever, we'd never heard of it before or knew anybody who had ever been there. So it was kind of a big leap to do that. And we're so glad we did because it, if you've never been there, it is, it is beautiful. And I think coming here was kind of a, more of a head decision rather than a heart decision because we're not young, so we need to have good medical care available and we, there were times we didn't feel that that was happening there. And we're lazy, we need the conveniences, the shopping conveniences that are here are so much better. It's cooler, we really like that it. it's so much cooler here. She used the right words. Uh, it, this was a head decision. And when we first moved to Huatuco, it, it was a heart decision. We, <clears throat> we needed to, uh, we'd been retired for a short time. We were Going miserable. <laughs> sitting in a house in the United States, couldn't do anything, and so we moved to Watuga. Was it a good decision? Yes. Was moving here a good decision? Yes.